This is Autofocus, the Philippines' premier motor show. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here are our features on this episode of the Electronic Magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with the reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market, a subcompact SUV from Hyundai, the Creta, and an MPV from Mitsubishi, the Expander Cross. Plus a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two mini hatchbacks, the Honda Brio RS Blacktop CVT versus Suzuki Celerio AGS. On Autopedia, we'll talk about everything about brakes. And together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have the highlights of the Nissan Media Drive in La Union as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus, and we'll be right back after this short break. Into new heights. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this episode of Electronic Magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Hyundai. This car review takes a look at the Hyundai Creta a subcompact crossover that falls within the 1 million to 1.3 million peso price range. Among the first models that Hyundai Motor Philippines launched after it took over local distribution of the brand was the Creta. At 4,315 millimeters long, 1,790 millimeters wide, and 1,630 millimeters tall with a roof rails, the Hyundai Creta competes in the subcompact crossover segment. With a ground clearance of 200 mm and 2,610 mm long wheelbase, the Hyundai Creta comes across as a sporty crossover with an SUV vibe, especially with the short overhangs front and rear. Hyundai brought in the Creta at two trim levels and three price points, the top of the line 1.5 GLS IVT at 1.388 million pesos, the mid-range 1.5 GL IVT at 1.288 million, and the entry-level 1.5 GL 6MT at 1.048 million. The Creta no doubt is a looker, standing out in the crowded crossover segment with a 3D parametric jewel pattern grille that effectively hides the LED daytime running lights until the engine is turned on in the two higher priced variants. The jewel motif is carried over in the design of the 17-inch diamond-cut alloy wheels, two-tone in the GLS and GL IVT, monotone in the GL6 MT, all wrapped by 60 series tires. The headlamps and turn signals are framed in the lower corners of the Creta fascia. The GLS and GL IVT feature a 4MFR multifaceted reflector LED headlights with auto light control. The signal repeater lights are halogens on all Creta. Standard exterior features in all Creta variants include power folding and adjusting outside door mirrors with repeaters, chrome outside door handles, LED rear combination lights, front and rear wipers, rear spoiler with high mount stop lamp. Hyundai has equipped the Philippine spec Creta with much of the comfort and convenience features buyers now expect in crossovers in the million peso range. All three variants come with power windows, power door locks, power side mirrors, multiple cup holders on doors, USB charging ports in front tray and console. All have air conditioning but only the top end GLS IVT has auto temperature control, as well as a glove box with cooling function. The 1.5 GLS and GL IVT come with smart key and button start system. 
With either digital or conventional instrument cluster, the Creta Dash looks modern and sporty. And they also fitted the Creta with an infotainment system that features an 8-inch touchscreen display with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto for the GLS and GLIVT, USB connection, Bluetooth with customizable voice recognition function. The top-end GLS even gets wireless charging. Covered in leatherette or fabric upholstery, the Creta front seats hold driver and front passenger comfortably in place on long or spirited drives. The two-tone interior gives off a premium vibe. At the rear, there's lots of room for two even with an armrest with twin cup holders on the seat back folded down. There's room for three at the back with the armrest folded up, but the best thing that can be said is that it would be cozy. The seat back also splits 60-40 and can be folded to increase space for luggage and other whatnots. There's a lot to like about driving the Credo, which is powered by a SmartStream G1.5 engine. The 1,497cc DOHC gasoline engine generates 113 horsepower and 144 newton meters of torque. While the powertrain numbers seem pedestrian, the IVT or intelligent variable transmission sending power and torque to the front wheels is responsive. The leather and upholstered steering wheel tilts and telescopes in the GLS and the GLIVT variants and features controls for such things as the audio and cruise control. Electric power steering makes for effortless turns of the steering wheel. The driver can select drive modes on the top of the line Creta, Eco, Normal, Smart, and Sport using the rotary dial behind the gear shift lever. The same rotary dial can be used to adjust traction control mode to help adapt to slippery and other difficult road conditions. The Creta suspension system featuring front McPherson struts and a CTBA or coupled torsion beam axle type suspension in the rear is tuned to provide a soft, comfortable ride. The brake system provides confident stopping power using discs on all wheels, 15-inch discs in front and 14-inch discs in the rear. All the Creta variants comes with electric parking brake with auto hold which makes driving in stop-and-go traffic less strenuous and stressful. Hyundai equipped the Creta variants brought into local market with a good mix of safety and security as well as driver assist features. All the variants arrived with dual airbags, anti-lock brake system, electronic stability control, hill start assist control, parking distance warning sensors, and child seat anchors. The 1.5 GLIVT shares with the 1.5 GLS additional driver assist features that include manual speed limit assist, lane following assist, tire pressure monitoring system, rear view monitor, as well as rear seat alert. But it's the top of the line 1.5 GLS IVT that is outfitted with more comprehensive advanced driver assist tech that includes blind spot collision avoidance system, lane keeping assist, forward collision avoidance assist, high beam assist, and driver attention warning. In offering three price points for the Creta, Hyundai hopes one would meet the wants, needs, and budget of would-be buyers. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track and the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing, exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill. Mitsubishi Expander Cross. Cross the current. Life should be filled with stories to be liked and loved. Elevate your drive with the new Honda City. Take value and performance to the next level so you can view more places and check into new experiences. With Honda Sensing, you can do all these with peace of mind with its modern design and advanced features. The new Honda City is for those who are ready to step up their game. The new Honda City. Elevate your drive. Welcome back to Auto Focus. We now have the latest auto industry news. 
Auto Alley BMW is now authorized to sell BMW electric vehicles. SMC Asia Car Distributors Corporation, the official importer and distributor of BMW in the Philippines, has appointed Auto Alley BMW as its third I retailer. Auto Alley joins RSA Motors Levis and RSA Motors Greenhills as official dealers of the iX3, iX, and i7 all electric BMWs. Auto Alley Chairman Bo Garcia sees EV sales growing in the country. We have a very strong demand from our client, a lot of inquiries already. So we are very excited and that the, I, we believe, I believe that the Philippine market is just starting to understand and develop the electric vehicle uh, cars uh, market. SMC Asia Cars Distributors Corporation has rolled out the 2024 M2 Sports Coupe. So today we're launching the all-new BMW M2 Coupe in the Philippines. We're very excited to be introducing this model to the Philippine market. It has been one model that's been very successful in the market in the Philippines for quite some time. And uh, with the second generation, we hope that this will reap the same success it has had for the past few years. The second-generation two-door twin-turbo inline-six powered coupe was showcased at the Carrera showroom in Alabang. The BMW M2 comes in two variants, the Pure and the Carbon. The Pure is priced at 5,990,000, while the Carbon is priced at 8,890,000 pesos. Both of the BMW M2 Pure and BMW M2 Carbon come with incredibly good looks matched by impressive power. In fact, these variants also come with the BMW M Twin Power Turbo petrol engine mated to an 8-speed M Subtronic transmission with drive logic. The Carbon and Pure are able to go from 0 to 100 within 4.3 seconds, which is very impressive uh, for a car this size. Hong Chi, the premier luxury automotive company in China and represented locally by Evo X Terra Incorporated, has formally opened its flagship dealership at the Bonifacio Global City while launching four new vehicles. During the formal opening of the Hong Chi flagship dealership at BGC, Evo X Terra President Rashid Delgado highlighted the brand's legacy and future blending mobility and nobility. For many years, the Hong Chi brand was only available for dignitaries and government officials in China. But it's only more recently that Hongxi now is, is available as a consumer brand and has really grand aspirations to compete on the global stage. Hongxi showcased four new models during the formal opening of its BGC dealership. The Hongxi EHS9, Hongxi EQM5, the H5, and the H9. These four vehicles are just the starting point. We will be bringing in a lot more exciting vehicles in, in the months and years to come and nobility and mobility really speaks to that heritage, to the technology, to the luxury, the sense of uh, sophistication and exclusivity, but also the willingness to adapt to the times that need to be more sustainable in the future. And that's why we're, we're launching with two EVs and two ICs. IC speaks to the past, but the EV speaks to the future, and we're, we're gonna be launching uh, many more EVs in, in, in the very near future, so we're very excited about that. Honda Cars Philippines has launched the all-new Honda CRV, rolling out three variants led by the 2.0 RS EHEV CVT. The top-of-the-line variant comes with a full hybrid powertrain that combines Honda's advanced gasoline engine and electrification technologies to achieve exceptionally low fuel consumption and a new level of driving pleasure. Yeah, this is the first time that we're going to offer a EHEV full hybrid technology. No? This is going to be the start of electrification of Honda in the Philippines. No? The all-new CRV is also the first model in Honda's local lineup to feature Honda Connect, which enables owners to communicate with their vehicle, check its status, and even be notified of alerts with a smartphone. So we are so happy to introduce the very first introduction to the Philippine market of the Honda Connect, uh, which is the mobile application feature and providing the better quality of the life to the people uh, with the safety, security, and convenience features. 
The other two variants are the all-new CRV, the 1.5V Turbo CVT and the 1.5VX AWD Turbo CVT are powered by a 1.5-liter direct injection DOHC VTEC gasoline engine. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We should take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Here's our comparison of the latest automobile models belonging to the same category on Head to Head. This edition of Head to Head pits two Japanese small hatchbacks, the Honda Brio RS Blacktop CVT and Suzuki Celerio AGS in a spec sheet comparison. Small hatchbacks remain attractive to first-time car buyers looking for practical and economical vehicles for moving about in crowded city streets. Two options are top-of-the-line small hatchbacks from Japanese brands, the Honda Brio RS Blacktop CVT and Suzuki Celerio AGS. The Honda Brio RS Blacktop CVT measures 3811mm long, 1682mm wide, and 1487mm tall with a 2405mm long wheelbase. The Suzuki Celerio AGS measures 3695mm long, 1655mm wide, and 1555mm tall with a 2435mm long wheelbase and 170mm ground clearance. The top-of-line Honda Brio 1.2 RS Blacktop CVT features the RS badge on the piano black front grille and RS design tail lamp, side sill garnish, 15 by 6J RS design alloy wheels wrapped by 185-55 R15 tires, and a black roof. The RS comes with LED headlights, daytime running lights, fog lamps, high mounts top lamp, and parking light. It is also equipped with a bulb type tail lamp. Other exterior features include body color door handles, power adjusting and folding crystal black side door mirrors with integrated turn signal lights, micro type antenna, and tailgate spoiler. The Rio also gets intermittent front wipers with washer and non intermittent rear wipers. The latest Suzuki Celerio comes with black oval grille, body color bumper, multi reflector headlamps, front fog lamps, LED rear combination lamps, rear bumper with reflectors. Other exterior features include two speed intermittent front wipers with washer, rear one speed wipers with washer, rear window demister, and body colored outside mirrors that power adjust and antenna mounted on front roof. The Celerio rides on 15 inch black alloy wheels wrapped by 175-60 R15 tires. The five seater Brio features front seats that slide and recline and come with adjustable headrests. The rear seat back folds and comes with three adjustable headrests. The seats are upholstered in black fabric with red accent. The three-spoke urethane steering wheel tilts but does not telescope and features illuminated audio controls. The dark Rio RS interior features RS design speedometer and metallic inner door handles. The top of the line Rio is equipped with keyless entry system, power windows, speed sensing auto door locks, air conditioning system with a digital display and manual controls. 
The new Solario GL comes with remote control door locks with hazard lamp. The seats for five are upholstered in fabric. The front passenger and driver seats manually adjust four ways. The rear seat back folds 60-40. The three-spoke steering wheel tilts and comes with controls for the audio system. The Solario dashboard features a large analog speedometer, a small digital tachometer, and an information display that includes fuel consumption and driving range. Other comfort and convenience features include central door locking with the switches on the center console, power windows, air conditioning with pollen filter, front console tray with beverage holder, drink holder on all doors, and a 12-volt accessory socket. The Honda Brio RS is equipped with 7-inch touchscreen audio system with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth, USB port, AM FM radio, Android Auto mirroring, and six speakers including two tweeters. The Solario comes with a 6.2-inch touchscreen audio unit with an anti-glare touchscreen, WebLink 2.0, Bluetooth and USB connectivity, and plays through speakers on the front and rear doors. The Brio is powered by a 1199cc inline 4-cylinder SOHC iVTEC engine with programmed fuel injection that generates 90 PS at 6000 RPM and 110 Nm of torque at 4800, made it to a continuously variable transmission driving the front wheels. The Brio suspension features McPherson struts with stabilizer in front and torsion beams in the rears. The brakes use ventilated discs in front and drums in the rear. The Solario GL is powered by a 1.0-liter K10C dual-jet engine that generates 67 horsepower and 89 newton meters of torque. This is mated to Suzuki's Auto Gear Shifter AGS system, an automated manual transmission featuring intelligent shift control actuator. The suspension system uses front McPherson struts and rear torsion beams. The brake system uses ventilated discs in front and leading trailing drums in the rear. Honda equipped the Brio with anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution. Rear sensors help with parking. Other standard safety features include dual SRS airbags, four three-point ELR safety belts with pretensioner and one lap belt for the middle passenger in the rear. The driver also gets a seat belt reminder. It also comes with security alarm and immobilizer. Suzuki equipped the Solario GL AGS with anti-lock brake system, electronic stability program, hill hold control, and engine auto stop start. Also added for safety are three-point ELR seat belts for four, a center lap belt in the rear seat, ISO-fixed child seat anchorages, child seat tethers, child-proof rear door locks, dual front airbags, rear parking sensors, and immobilizer. Hatchbacks like the Brio and the Solario are attractive options for those looking at affordable modes of personal mobility. Zoom UX. Take the lead. Are you into grassroots racing, slaloms, autocross, time attacks, and circuit racing? Do you like to keep your daily ride in tip-top condition? Do you want to improve the performance and ride of your vehicle? Then head over to Fix Stop Auto Service along 91 Congressional Avenue, Project 8 in Kazan City. Fix Stop Auto Service can level up the performance and ride of your daily rider weekend racer of all brands, models, and makes from Japanese, American, European, and all other global manufacturers. Fix Stop Auto Service offers preventive maintenance services as well as upgrades of brakes, suspension, and other mechanical works. Fix Stop also caters to all your needs for performance tires and accessories to make your dream vehicle stand out on the road or for just your enjoyment. For appointments, call 0917-803-8283 or message us on our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash fixstopautoservice. The new Mitsubishi Expander 
Alexander Cross. Cross the current. Hello, I'm Johan Tiu from Sonax Philippines. We are at LG2 e. Rodriguez and we will be showcasing our new DIY line, the what we call the Extreme Ceramic Series from Sonax. The next one that we're gonna we're gonna show you how to use is a ceramic ultra slick detailer. So this product is your quick solution to instantly apply a ceramic coating on your car and also instantly clean it. Give it an instant gloss, instant solution for a gloss. So this is very easy to use. So you just spray on a clean microfiber cloth, then just apply it on the body of your car. Oh, but make sure your car is also clean and doesn't have any dirt. So after applying, spray some water. So you can see the water beading hydrophobic effect instantly. So this product can give you a ceramic coating that could last you around 8 to 16 car washes. So there you go. So that's how easy it is to apply the Extreme Ceramic Series from Sonax. For more information, you can visit our FB page, which is Sonax Page Official our IG page, which is also Sonax PH Official, and TikTok page, which is also Sonax PH Official. So it's very easy to find us. Thank you. Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. Members of the motoring media and so-called influencers got a chance to experience the performance, comfort, and cutting-edge technology of the new Almera with Nissan Connect services on a drive from Manila to tourist attractions in San Juan, La Union. Here are the highlights. Today we are here at San Juan because I'm Juan, so San Juan should be also the place that we should bring our journalists. We drove from Manila and actually the idea is that we can test the vehicle during this long drive to come to one of the most beautiful places in the Philippines for surfers and also for a lot of activities. First on the test drive, I think the most important part is that you can test the vehicle. The safety, the responsiveness, also a fuel consumption during the whole trip, and also the new things that the car brings, because we have a lot of new Nissan intelligent features for safety, but also we have the new design and the looks. And it's amazing when you are driving all, almost like 20 cars, and everyone is looking at the amazing vehicle and how it's the new color also during the sunset when we were driving. That was beautiful. We want also to have a deep dive on the new technology, especially the connected car services that you can try, that you can understand the features, that you can understand the capabilities of the using from your fingertips with a smartphone, all the car features that you can activate it through the smartphone. So the new Almera have the new design, both exterior and interior, also has additional features of the Nissan Intelligent Mobility. Also, we add a, like dry pressure also, we add, also added some additional features but one of the things that we are more proud of it is that we are launching for the first time in Philippines with, in this segment a Nissan uh, Connected Car Services, which is connectivity. They, that means the car have features that can help you to control from the smartphone. I give you examples, like for instance, you want to go to a valet parking and then you give the keys to your car, but you want to set a curfew so, or a, an area that it will give you uh, signals if the driver goes far from that distance. All of those things is to give you more control on a situation and using the vehicle also to have the track history when you visit the workshop or also all the elements that we can help you in the future when the car is connected. So there is a lot of possibilities that can be opening for the new technology. 
So uh, Almera Nameplate is one of the elements that we dear the customers here in the Philippines. They are very grateful for the vehicle. I think that they are always looking for the brand. I, we were talking to some of the dealers yesterday and there was already, through the news, through the message that you are uh, posting, there are already people knowing that they want to see the Almera. So Almera is a nameplate that is very at the heart of the Filipinos. Starting price will be at 839,000 Philippine pesos, but the variant that has the car connectivity, it starts at 1,140,000 uh, Philippine pesos. So you can go, you can see them. I actually recommend that you test drive them because you will understand the uh, capabilities of this new technology. The Media Test Ride and Drive is part of Drive Pinas, a collaborative initiative of Nissan Philippines and the Department of Tourism which aims to promote inclusive and sustainable motoring and tourism ventures. We expect to be featuring more of such events in the future. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies Motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track. And the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing, exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill. Mitsubishi Expander Cross. Cross the current. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. So you want an MPV for the family, but you don't want it to be a mom mobile. Perhaps the Mitsubishi Expander Cross is for you. This car will take a look at Mitsubishi's entry into the 7-seater MPV segment. Mitsubishi first rolled out the Expander in 2017 as a 7-seater multi-purpose vehicle in Indonesia. It took a year before Mitsubishi Philippines brought it to the country, and it was a hit in the local MPV crossover segment as it was in the region. But competition in the MPV segment is fierce, and Mitsubishi, listening to customer suggestions, wants and needs, unveiled the Expander Cross, an upgrade that moves the MPV closer to SUV from crossover level. The latest Mitsubishi Expander Cross, all 4,595 millimeters long, 1,790 millimeters wide, and 1,750 millimeters tall while sitting 225 millimeters off the ground can stand among SUVs on parking lots without looking out of place. The Expander Cross gives a dynamic shield concept, the steroid treatment, along with new front and rear bumpers and 17-inch two-tone alloy wheels to make it look more like an SUV. The Expander Cross can be immediately recognized on the road, day and night, from the T-shaped headlamps housing three projector LED lights matched by the T-shaped LED rear combination lamps. The Expander Cross also comes with front fog lamps, roof rails, and fin-type antenna. The Expander Cross interior has been given a major makeover with premium soft-touch materials on the dash, the doors, and the sides. One gets into the cabin with Mitsubishi's keyless operation system, locking and unlocking the doors and starting the engine with a push of a button with key fob in pocket or bag. The seats are upholstered in navy blue and black synthetic leather with a heat guard that helps keep the seats cool on hot days. The leather steering wheel with multiple buttons and controls on the Expander Cross should look familiar to Montero owners. It tilts and telescopes and returns to linear position even when driving at a slow speed. 
The cabin dash looks premium, classy, and high-tech, especially with the 8-inch digital LCD meter cluster. The digital air conditioning controls with clearly laid out buttons and large toggle switches and control temp, fan speed, and aircon modes. And the 7-inch touchscreen smartphone lake display audio system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity. While looking like a proper SUV, the Expander Cross provides much of what families look for in spacious MPV that can comfortably sit 7. There's a front armrest with console box and tissue holder between the well-bolstered driver and front passenger seats, and a second row seat with fold-down armrest with beverage holders. Mitsubishi also thought of families who love their gadgets and included Type A and C USB ports and two 12-volt accessory outlets, one in the front, another on the third row. The Expander Cross is powered by Mitsubishi's 4A91 DOHC 16 valve 1499cc inline 4 gasoline engine with MyVac that generates 104.5 PS and 141 Nm of torque. This is mated to a 4 speed automatic transmission that sends all that power and torque to the front wheels. With the highest minimum ground clearance in class, the Mitsubishi Expander Cross should give drivers confidence in tackling flooded streets. This should prove useful in these days of sudden downpours flooding major thoroughfares in the metro. Mitsubishi has also improved the ride and handling of the Expander Cross, which comes with a suspension featuring McPherson struts with coil spring and stabilizer in front and the rear torsion beam suspension system found in the Montero. The brakes feature front disc and rear drums combo but comes with anti-lock brake system and electronic brake force distribution and brake assist. Also aiding driver on the road is a number of automotive technologies like active stability and traction control, active yaw control, hill start assist, and for parking, a reverse camera. Also added for safety are driver and front passenger airbags, three-point seat belts for seven, isofix, and tether anchors. The Mitsubishi Expander Cross is listed at 1.328 million pesos, which would make this MPV in SUV guys appeal to loyalists and lure more to the brand. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Hi, this is Sydney, and today we're going to be talking about brakes. Car brakes are pretty are simple enough to understand. Step on the pedal, car stops. Not much science, right? The reason it works that way is because modern braking works so flawlessly, everybody literally takes it for granted. Those things that you hear in the news that, oh, bumanga, sumemplang, dal nawala ng preno, that's not true. That almost never happens. Even on a clunky Jeep, if there is brake fluid in there somewhere, that Jeep will stop. So there's no such thing as you lose brakes. No, that's not true. And on all cars now, you have a set of these. This brake. I'll dispel the first myth. Brakes do not stop your car. No. Tires stop your car. Brakes slow your car down. But tires are the ones that do the stopping. That's myth number one. Myth number two. Disc brakes are better than drum brakes. Loaded question, but generally, no. They work exactly in the same way, and actually in some instances, drum brakes are actually better. That's why you will still see majority of the cars here have disc brakes in the front, drum brakes at the back. Even the newer ones like the Nissan Terra has still drum brakes at the back because it works, it's efficient, and it's almost foolproof. <laughs> All right, myth number three. Nangangalawang yung preno ko eh. Normal ba yun? Yes, it's very normal. The material that your brake disc is made from is cast iron. It has to be cast iron because once this metal gets hot, it becomes somewhat malleable and ductile, which causes it to grip the brake pad even more. So it's somewhat sticky in metal terms. It cannot be stainless steel, it cannot be aluminum, it cannot be plastic, it cannot be brass, and it definitely cannot be gold. So yes, if it's iron or bakal, mangangalawang yan, and that's perfectly normal. So this is what your stock disc brake looks like. 
flat pancake looking frisbee thing. What you'll see most in people put is something like this. Same size as stock, but has dimples, sometimes holes, has these slots. These are referred to as racing brake rotors. Now, the big question, will my car stop better if I put this as opposed to this one? The honest answer, if you're just driving along Metro Manila, no. Your car will not stop faster because you have this. It will look better, but no. It will not reduce your stopping distance in any way. So why bother do you have stuff like this? Well, as the name implies, racing brake discs. This comes into play once you do actual racing. With the slots and the dimples, this is a bit cooler. You will not brake any better because you have this, but it will allow you to stay on the race course longer by a lap, maybe two laps, and that's important in racing. Before your brake starts to fade and you have to go back to the pits. This is where this comes in. It cools down faster in a, in a racing environment, but it will also come to a point that it will not cool down no more if you abuse the car too much. So once that happens, your brakes will start to fade, you will start to lose brakes. Then that means, okay, time to stop, time to go to the pit, cool down. These are actually the other equation of braking. And if you do want better braking, easiest and fastest is just, just change one of these things. The brake pads. They're cheap enough, they're plentiful enough, and they're pretty easy to do. You have a set of tools, a couple of friends, you can do this in one afternoon. So we have here different brake pad sizes and it does not take a genius to see which can brake better. Obviously, the big brake pad versus the small brake pad. And this is where the third part of the equation comes in, the brake caliper. <laughs> this is your brake pad. This wears down. Its job is to keep wearing down. This is a friction material. This one presses along the disc here, both sides. If you don't have your foot on the pedal, it's slightly gapped like that. But once you press it, it will press down. Then it will cause this to slow down. This gets worn out over time. And the easiest way to see if it needs changing, you just simply take a look at it. You can see through your wheels and through the brake pads. If it goes down to this line, then yeah, time to change. And as this goes down, as it wears down, you will feel your brake pedal get deeper and deeper and deeper. When you change to a fresh set of pads, your brake pedal automatically becomes firm again, just like magic. Now, you can buy several different brands of this one. There's, of course, OEM, there's replacement, there's Japanese replacement, there's Korean replacement, there's brand name performance brake pads. So which should you buy? Get whatever you can afford. It's come to a point that there's no such thing as a bad brake pad. All of them will stop your car. It's just that if you want something better, then you go for the brake pad brands that are known for performance, like Brembo is one that does OEM pads. EBC is another one. Hawk is another one. They have a different compound here that once it reaches operating temperature, allows it to grip the brake this more, causing you to slow down faster. Note I said slowing down, not stop. This is what actually applies the force from your foot down to the brakes itself. You can see these are the two brake pads here. That's the brake disc in there. So this will squeeze down on the brake disc once you press the pedal. This is a four piston caliper. Why is it four? Because there are literally four pistons here. So it's just one, two, three, four. There's four cylinders here. Your normal car has one, maybe two pistons at the most. That's it. This is a big brake setup. Why is it bigger? It's bigger than this standard rotor that's supposed to be for this Civic. And the way that it works, very simple. Physics. The longer the distance here, this is basically a lever. The longer the distance, the more force you can generate by applying it on the end. So this is it. That's how big brakes work in essence. And then another myth that is proliferating has to do with big wheels. Why do all these supercars have big wheels that everybody wants to emulate? It's because the need to house bigger brakes. It's not just because it looks nice and has more grip. No, they have big wheels to so house big brakes. That's the only reason why supercars have big wheels. And on a final note, I always like to say, you can have too much power, but you can never have too much braking. So when do you want to upgrade your brakes? Oh, trust me, you will know the time counts. You will have one or two close calls. It will say, that, oh, ugh. I should need to upgrade my brakes already. So 
there, now you have a better understanding of how your car brakes works and is it worth upgrading the brakes or not? Now you know. That's our feature on Autopedia this week. Taking care of your ride has been made easier. And that's Autofocus this week. We hope you have found this episode of Electronic Automobile Magazine informative as well as entertaining. Check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy.